is to help you add and subtract fractions, just basic fractions. Um, the first thing you need to know is the numerator of the fraction is the top of the fraction, and the denominator of the fraction is the bottom of the fraction. Now, whenever you're adding or subtracting fractions, the denominator has to be the same. So in this example, both denominators are already fives, so you're good to go. So when you already have a common denominator, you keep the denominator the same in your answer. And then you simply just add the numbers on the top. 3 plus 8 is 11. So your answer is 11 fifths. If you need your answer to be a mixed number instead of an improper fraction, what you do is you ask yourself how many times does 5 go into 11? 5 goes into 11 two whole times, but 5 times 2 is only 10, so you have 1 left over out of 5, and your denominator will stay 5. So you can either say your answer is 2 and 1 fifth, or you can say your answer is 11 fifths. Now let's do an example where the denominator is not the same for this, for example, this one. On this one, the first denominator is 8 and the second denominator is 4. You have to have a common denominator. And the way that you do this is you think of least common multiples. For example, multiples of 8 are 8, 16, 24, 32, etc. Multiples of 4 are 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, and so on. Now when you're trying to find the least common multiple, basically you're finding the number in common that's the same that's the smallest, so the smallest common multiple. So in this case it would be 8. So this one already is an 8, so we can leave it alone. This one is not an 8. In order to make it an 8, we need to multiply it by 2. Now whenever you multiply the bottom of a fraction by something, you have to multiply the top of the fraction by the exact same thing in order to keep the fraction equivalent to what it already was. So I'm going to rewrite my problem. 7 8 was fine to stay 7 8 because it already, the denominator was already an 8. Now this one now becomes 1 times 2 on top, which is 2, and on the bottom 4 times 2, which is 8. So now we once again have a common denominator, and again when you're adding, the denominator stays the same, and you simply add the numbers on the top. 9, 7 plus 2 is 9. So your answer would be 9 eighths. And again, if you need to turn this into a mixed number, 8 goes into 9 one whole time, with one left over out of the eight. So it's one and one eight. For the next example, let's do one where we have to change both denominators. Okay, again, we need a common denominator between three and seven. So common, or multiples, excuse me, of three would be three, six, nine, twelve, 15, 18, 21, 24, etc. Multiples of 7 would be 7, 14, 21, 28, etc. So the least common multiple or the smallest number that they have in common would actually be all the way up here at 21. So we need to make both these denominators a 21. In order to make a 3 21, we have to multiply it by 7. Now again, whenever you multiply the bottom of the fraction by something, you have to multiply the top of the fraction by the same thing. Now over on this fraction, in order to make this 7 a 21, I need to multiply it by a 3. And again, I'll multiply the top of that fraction by that same thing, another 3. So now I'm going to rewrite this fraction on top. We have 2 times 7, which is 14. On the bottom of the fraction, we have 3 times 7, which is 21. And this fraction on the top, we have 4 times 3, which is 12. And the bottom, we have 7 times 3, which is 21. Now we finally have a common denominator, so we can go ahead and leave 21 as the answer, um, the denominator's answer. 
And for the numerator, you just add straight across. 14 plus 12 is 26. So you have 26 over 21. And again, if you need to change this into an improper fraction, 21 goes into 26 one whole time. But the difference between 26 and 21 is 5. So there's 5 left over out of the original 21. So it's 1 and 5 out of 21. And for the last example, let's do a subtraction problem or a double negative problem. And again, we need to find a common denominator. In this case, the multiples of 9 would be 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, etc. And the multiples of 2 would be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, oops. So, least common multiple. First one they had in common was actually, I'd have to keep going on this because I don't see any in common. So I'm going to have to keep going on this bottom one. The next thing after 14, 16 would be 18. And there we go. We finally have a common denominator. It would be 18. So sometimes if you don't find one, you might have to keep going. And if all else fails, multiply the two numbers together, and that will at least give you a common multiple. might not necessarily be the least common, but at least it will get you get you to where you need to be. So we use common multiple is 18. So in order to make this 9 and 18, we need to multiply it by 2. And again, whatever we do to the bottom of a fraction, we have to do the same thing to the top. To make this 2 and 18, we need to multiply it by a 9. So we'll also multiply the top by 9. Now in my fraction on the top, I have negative 5 times 2, which is negative 10, over 9 times 2, which is 18 minus, on the top of this fraction, I have 3 times 9, which is 27. And on the bottom of the fraction, I have 18. Now, when I'm subtracting and I'm dealing with negative numbers and positive numbers, I like to change it into adding the opposite. So I'm going to change this negative sign, or this minus sign, to adding a negative 27. Okay, now I have my common denominator of 18, so I'm ready to write the denominator as 18. And then in the top, we just add the two negative numbers. Negative 10 plus a negative 27 is a negative 37. And that is your answer. If you need to change this one into an improper, or excuse me, if you need to change this one into a mixed number, the fraction's negative, so we'll start off by putting the negative out front. Now, 18 goes into 37 actually two times, because 2 times 18 is 36, which gives you one left over out of the 18 that you started with. And your answer is negative 2 and 1 18th, or negative 37 over 18. I hope that was helpful. Please leave me some comments so I can see if this is helpful or not and also let me know of future lessons you might like to see here on YouTube. Um, I'll be making some more soon. Thanks.